going to, you know, we're, we're on their right side, right, where we finished off. We'll just start with our hands at the neck, right? We're just finishing up the kneading of the neck on the second side. And so our duck bills on the neck and sliding right along the base of the skull. We'll finish up, left hand slides down to the sacrum, right hand to C7, just pull them into you, plop them over, and have them roll over on their back. You step to the foot of the table, get them in the middle, and make sure that they're, that their head is reasonably close to the top of the table. And you want to down because the first thing we're going to do is step back and traction. We've got the lift. And step up. All right, actually, we can do that a couple of times, just like we do in the Dao Yin. And we'll step up, widen, and winch your wipers in. So then we're pushing on the ankles or top of the foot close to the ankle. Then we'll bring their heels together. And windshield wipers out, again, close to the ankles with your hands. And that gives you the right leverage. Now, <clears throat> open up as wide as the table will allow, and do it again. Windshield wipers in, so we're testing their hips. Yeah, heels still on the table, though, I think, is, works best. And now bring the heels together, and we'll push out. And then, one hand's going to scoop up both heels, while your other hand gets your chesty pillow and lift the legs, put it under their knees, and then separate their feet, draping the legs over the pillow. And you want their knees in the middle of the pillow. So their legs drape footward, their thighs drape toward the pelvis. You step to your left, you grab their wrists, and even out their shoulders. Then fold their hands over their lower rib cage. Put your left knee up on the table underneath their elbow. Hands around to the low back. And we're going to flatten out their low back. Then as we remove our knee, we don't need it today, but this would be the place where we would drape them if they needed that. We're good. We're just going to turn and face their knee. Tell in your right palm, we're going to start to rock this way. And so here, the main rock is for the hip joint. But meanwhile, the, the rocking shakes their foot and opens up their ankle. And then we're using the pillow to get a little bounce to work the knee and the patella. And we'll let the rock drift to a halt. And we're going to start our duckbill squeezes up and down the thigh. So squeezing lifts the muscles away from the bone. We work our way up as high as is comfortable, trying to get uh, complete on the leg, and then start your way back down. Work all the way back to the knee to, to where you feel the epicondyles, then we'll turn around and go back up again. And remember if they're ticklish, lean into it a little bit more, add weight, but also slower, more methodical. Okay, we get to the top of the thigh for the second time. We pivot headward and we go into our fist press. <coughs> Either side of the rectus femoris, we got this spleen and stomach channel. <coughs> Work your way all the way down to the knee joint this time. And then back up to the top, same start position. And we widen, pick up the liver and gallbladder channels. Elbows out, use your pecs. <coughs> back should be flat and straight. And you take your height out by moving your back foot back, so you're not hunching over your <coughs> upright. OK, 
Okay, back up to the top, round three. Start as close to the groin as you can. And now we're widening two steps to pick up the kidney on the inside and the back of the IT band, another part of the gallbladder channel on the outside for our third pass. <coughs> and all the way to the knee joint. We slip our fingers behind the knee, put our thumbs down on the top of the patella, and we start our thumb circles. <coughs> First one hugs the kneecap. <coughs> We get down to the bottom, we jump back to the top, a thumb width wider for circle number two. Closing the circle at the bottom, jump back up to the top, another thumb width wider. So this time the circle will really come around on the sides of the knee. <coughs> right through the medial and lateral collateral ligaments. <clears throat> and as we close the circle, we should be on that prominence that is the tibial tuberosity. That's our landmark. We then pivot and we're facing the leg. Push the leg away from you. And if the rocking got it a little too far away, pick it up and pull it toward you a little bit. Now right knee props it up. Knee is just below the malleolus. Left hand stays there at their knee. And our right thumb now is going to start the stomach channel, three lines. The first line is between the crest of the tibia and the tibialis muscle. Thumb tip points headward. And we're working all the way down <coughs> to the ankle. That big hollow right in the middle. And back up to the top. Move a thumb width laterally, but we're also turning our thumb sideways so it's across the tibialis for the second pass. Second branch of the stomach channel. This is the main pathway. As we get about two-thirds of the way down, we run out of the muscle and we can straighten our thumb out and just follow the tendon down to the ankle hollow, which is stomach 41. And back up to the top, stomach 36 level. Now we're going to the outside lateral edge of the tibialis anterior. Thumb tip pointed headward again. So the three lines of the stomach channel is all about the tibialis anterior. One edge, then the middle, then the other edge. And all three lines converge at the same hollow on top of the ankle, what I just call the central ankle hollow, stomach 41. Okay, so we got it popped below with the knee and above with the hand. We're now going to release that knee and step way back Pushing the leg further away to expose the fibula. Right thumb comes up, find the head of the fibula, you can just circle around a little bit, and find the bottom and anterior corner, and that starts, that's called by 34. We're going to start our way down this time on the gallbladder channel, and we should be anterior to the fibula the whole way down, even though you can't feel it, you can visualize it. And we go right past the lateral malleolus into the sinus tarsi, probably letter 40. And we'll step up and pick their leg up, push their pant leg up out of the way and maybe get their sock out of the way too. It's warm enough today, we can do that. Get the curve of their Achilles across the curve of your thigh and about in the middle of your thigh. Left hand's going to clamp the ankle down and push it into your thigh, then wrap your hand around the bottom of the foot and rotate. First one direction, and the other. 
Just getting a good range of motion <clears throat> throughout then. We will reverse it again a couple of times. Reverse again a couple of times. And then we're going to pivot our fingers toward their heel. Heel of your palm on the ball of their foot. Get a few good firm dorsiflexions. Three or four of those should be good. And relax. Let your right hand wrap around the bottom of the foot again. As your left hand, the thumb joins the hand and you curl your fingers into the big hollow behind the medial malleolus, kidney three. And we'll start working up the yin channels of the leg with our four finger press. So the most anterior one is the spleen. And we bring that right on up into the curve of the medial condyle. And jump back to the ankle, kidney three. We're a fingertip breadth posterior to the first line, so we're a little further away from the bone for our liver channel pass. So the hand is like a hook. The brace is the heel of your palm on their <coughs> tibia. We get up a little bit higher and a little further back as we hit the condyle. Slide back to the malleolus. And our third pass will be the kidney line. We're a little further back, but we should still be, when we get there, anterior to the medial head of the gastroc. So we're not squishing the gastroc into the bone. But this time as we hit the condyle, we can follow the condyle all the way around to that medial dimple from the other side, kidney 10. And then we're going to smooth it all out. First with just the distal part of our fingers. Then we're going to focus with the fingertips on the shaft. So that part of the liver channel that's anterior to the spleen. And then we'll finish off with the whole length of the fingers, get the whole inside of the leg. We're going to stop at the top and pull their cuff down as we step to the bottom of the foot. And we're going to spread the dorsum of the foot. Working from the bases toward the MP joints. And not too much sliding, a little bit is okay, but just kind of spread the bones apart. And we'll focus on the bottom of the foot. Fingertips again. Spreading the sole of the foot. And then we're going to alternate top and bottom. Back and forth, three of those. And step back with one foot and slide your thumbs from the ankle all the way to the webbing between the toes. <coughs> and we're going to turn your thumbs on their sides to get through the knuckles, the MP joints. Okay. Finish that up. We've now drawn the chi from the ankle to the toes. Step up, horse stance. Right hand cradles the heel, a little bit of traction. Left hand gets the toe tips. And we're going to wobble, vibrate the toes. And release. Walk your and isolate the little toe. We're going to start with that to start our presses. Lateral line is first, up to the nail point, bladder 67. And back to the MP joint. So a nice clamp with your thumb, not a pinch, not a squeeze. Okay, third line ends at kidney zero. And we go on to the fourth toe, gallbladder. Ending at 44, back to the MP joint. Remember, we should have about five presses per line. And so that middle one ends right on the nail. The 
lateral and medial lines end at their respective nail points. And just keep moving medially. Three lines per toe. Remember, all three of those lines are on the top, the dorsum of the toes, and that's why, why they end up at nail points. Meanwhile, your index finger is crooked underneath for back support. Now, meanwhile, I've got a little bit of traction on each toe, so I'm kind of drawing the chi out. And as we go to the big toe, use both thumbs, get the medial and lateral lines, the spleen and liver channel together, then come down the middle together. So no matter how big the big toe is, we can cover it. Then repeat the spleen and liver lines. As we finish up there, we step between the feet and go to our thumb presses, starting way toward the back of the medial calcaneum. So, and then our first line is the lower line, coming along the arch till we get to the big toe knuckle. And back to our start point, the second line slightly higher and we should be just inferior to the bones, especially the first metatarsal. And we come all the way to the big toe knuckle. And right there at the end, you can kind of hook your thumb, curl it into, on the medial side there, Susanna. <coughs> um, we'll press and rotate spleen three. And we're squeezing. <coughs> Both feet, and I'm going to step to our right. Left hand goes to the knee, pivot, and we'll rock this leg. Give it a good shake out with the hip, the ankle, the knee. All should be loose and pliable and floppy. And then we'll let it come to a halt <coughs> and start our duck bills. Nice squeeze, nothing pinchy. Nice <coughs> duck bills. Go up as far as you can and turn around, head back down. Just do the Condyles, epicondyles, and back up. And now pivot headward. Start our fist presses. Three passes down the thigh, from the top of the thigh to the knee. Working all six leg channels, but we're working down. There's a kind of focus on the yang. They're not the, going against the flow and the yin doesn't help clear them. Each pass we widen a bit to pick up different channels, slightly different muscles. So remember here, your, um, your fist should be thumbs headward your palms are facing you, and that your fingers are out, so they're not, it's not really a fist, even though I call it a fist press. There's room to squeeze, and that gives, and we come all the way to the knee joint with each of those, so now it's just an easy slip your fingers behind the knee to start your thumb presses around the patella. Is the bullseye of your target, and we're 
drawn the rings wider and wider. So that third pass should really come around on the sides of the knee and close at the tuberosity. And we pivot and we should be facing their legs. Push it away from you, prop it up. This time it's her left knee below their malleolus. And with the knee and your left thumb is then going to just come off the bone, <coughs> lateral to the tuberosity. We'll pick up the first branch of the stomach channel. And just working our way down the leg, leaning into it, leaning into our thumbs to deliver the pressure. And a nice contiguous line. Back up to the top, we turn our thumb sideways across the fibers of the tibialis for that second line. Until we run out of muscle, and then you can turn your thumb back headward. <laughs> Slide on down to the central ankle hollow. <coughs> And back up to the top, find that lateral edge of the tibialis muscle. And that groove between the tibialis and the extensor digitorum. It's a subtle groove, but the tibialis muscle is quite conspicuous. All three lines converging at the ankle, same spot. Step back with that left foot, push the leg further away, come up behind the head of the fibula, anterior and inferior to it, starts our fourth line, which is now a gallbladder channel line. And we're anterior to the fibula the whole way down. As the lateral malleolus is the distal end, we go right front of it and into the sinus tarsi, gallbladder 40, and step up, and your right knee goes up on the table as you push their pant leg out of the way, and drape it over your thigh, and we're going to clamp the ankle down, and range the foot first in one direction. And the other. So just like in the dog yin, maybe six times around. The yeah, other leg misty. Other leg misty. So we're alternating legs here. And then we're going to alternate the circles, but not so many times. Just get a nice free range of motion. Then we'll pivot. Fingertips toward their heel so we can get a good dorsiflexion. For those, then relax, bring your hand back around to this nice, comfortable handhold where we're going to wrap around the <coughs> medial big toe knuckle. And now let your thumb join your right hand for the forefinger press. Otherwise, it feels like you're going back up the stomach channels. If you So the back pressure here is the heel of your palm. Our first pass is our spleen pass. So nails need to be short here. We get all the way to the condyle, then slide back to the malleolus. Drop a little further posteriorly for the second pass, which is our liver line. the bone, the condyle, then back to kidney three. This time it is going to be the kidney line. <coughs> Start behind the malleolus. We're already on the kidney channel. We run through the soleus till we pick up the gastroc. And it should be anterior to the gastroc. 
and I have plenty of overlap. I'm not moving a whole hand width each time. But this one we're going to drift all the way around to that medial dimple behind the knee to finish. And then start our smoothing. And the liver channel on the tibia, in the middle of the shaft there. And then finish off with the whole length of the fingers, the whole inside of the leg, all the way from ankle to knee. We're going to stop at the top, grab the cuff, and pull the pant leg down as you step to the foot of the table, and we're right into spreading the dorsum of the foot. And the bottom of the foot. And alternate. And widen your stance. Cradle the heel with the left hand this time. Toes with the right. Vibrate the toes. So that's really working the MB joint. So dorsiflexing and plantar flexing just the toes. Don't let your hand leave the toes. You create a little cap that they just fit in. And you push headward and then footward, forward. Okay, and then we just kind of do it more quickly. Okay, releasing there. We walk our stance in and right hand goes to the little toe. We start the three lines on each toe, lateral to medial, MP joint to nail point. That little toe has ladder 67 and kidney zero has nail points. Now the fourth toe, the lateral nail point, of course, is gallbladder 44. <coughs> Third toe is that branch of the stomach channel. It does end at the lateral nail point, even though it doesn't have a number. I'm thinking about designating it as 45B. <coughs> With the second toe, lateral nail point, being 45 or 45A. And both thumbs on the big toe. Put a liver and spleen one together, then down the middle. And repeat the lines that go to liver and spleen one. Then we step between the feet and we're going to do the lines along the medial aspect of the foot from the heel to the MP joints again. First is the arch line. And then secondly, slightly higher, just a finger breadth, but stays inferior to the first metatarsal and finally just hooks into that space between the plantar fascia and <coughs> the metatarsal, just proximal to the MP joint. Then we'll squeeze both feet a couple of times. And we're going to step to our right. So if we had them draped, we walk all the way up, we could bring the drape all the way down and cover their feet. Um, we could also put their socks back on if we needed that. I think we're good to go here today. We're just going to scoop the left arm off the table, so two fingers in each hand, step back with your left foot, get a little traction on the shoulder, and shake this out. <clears throat> okay, and so now, um, um, we'll just pause for just a sec. Do you guys want to flip around so you can see better? So just have your partner put their head the other way, and you'll be able to see. You guys are fine. Okay, 
So let's just do that again. We'll just do a quick shake out on the arm without pulling them off center. Then stepping up, turn the palm so it faces the shoulder. Your left hand goes into the elbow. Keep it a little crease. And we're going to do a couple of test pumps first just to make sure that's working before we start circling. And the circle will be clockwise on this side. So the fingers are just laid across the forearm. They're at the elbow across all three yin channels. So we're working all three yin channels with this. And the last one, we'll step up. The elbow hand slides up to the hand and pulls the wrist back. And so here again, we want, we want to be looking at their shoulder with their arm on our midline. And then our folding is perpendicular to that line. Make sure that their MP joints are kind of in the middle of your hand. On this side, you can see they're lined up with your middle finger. And of course, it's just the weight of our hand for the flexion. We can put a little more energy into the extension. I'm just going back and forth. Start easy, and as you feel what they're capable of, you can start to stretch it more. Uh, let's say six or eight of those. Rotating the wrist, so you've got a pretty strong pull on your left hand and a push down into the table with your right, which has to be distal to the styloid processes or it doesn't feel right. Go both directions with this, and we can even change it a couple of times just to get a nice smooth circle. Now step back with your left foot, their palm is down, we're going to spread the back of their hand. Step out of the then, left. Yeah. Then their, then the palm spreading. And then alternate. Back and palm. Okay, and thumb slides from the wrist to the web margins. Outer pair, inner pair. And there you need enough clearance that you don't run into yourself. So that's that left foot back should have accomplished that. And got to work a little more diligently to get through the MP joints and all the way to the web margin. So sliding on the sides of your thumbs. To accomplish that. And now we want to change feet. So right foot is back. Left hand's got the thenar eminence and thumb and got a little bit of traction on the shoulder. While the right hand isolates the little finger and puts a little traction on the digit. We're going to start our squeezes with the sides. Squeezes. Then back to then the top and bottom. Now we've got about six presses per pass, and the third pass is going to be the sides again. Then put it down, pick up the ring finger, and continue in this fashion. So we're doing the sides twice, first and third pass, because we're interested in the channels and the nail points where they terminate. Put the finger down, pick up the next one, and try to get all the way into the webbing and as close to the MP joint as you can. If you look closely, you may see the MP joint gap a little bit. Because you've got just enough traction on the digit to do that. I'm on the index finger. Just doing a nice job on each digit. We're now done with the four fingers. We're going to change feet and hands now to work the thumb. We're going to start all the way at the base of the first metacarpal and work all the way out. 
<coughs> to the nail points. So it makes the thumb feel about the same as the other fingers, even a little bit longer now <coughs> instead of shorter. Okay, as we finish the thumb, we push the hand away, this vertically right over the elbow, push the sleeve out of the way. We're going to clamp the wrist between our palms, lacing our fingers around the radius, clamp the ulna with the heels of your palm. Thumbs are one on the back, one on the palm. And now step up, shoulder height, and we're going to traction in the shoulder. And then relax and angle. And stretch again, this time up on our tiptoes, get a little more traction. The scapula involved, and relax and angle. So first of the shoulder, and then scapula. And now this third one, we're going to step back. Uh, between a 16 and a 45 degree angle, we'll get the shoulder, the scapula, and all the way to the spine. Relax, angle, and releasing your hands, or dangle all the way down to the table. Then quickly step to the top of the table to even their shoulders up. Okay, step back with one foot and push the shoulders toward the feet. You're on the plane of the table. Now stand up and push the shoulders into the table. Open their chest. And step back again and get your fingers underneath. And we're going to massage the upper back. That whole area between the spine and the scapulas. Resting on your forearms on the table. Your thumbs are out on top. And especially work the rhomboid attachments right there along the medial border. We're squirming our way out by working headward, and finally we stand up and lever our thumbs into the anterior margin of the trapezius. And we work back and forth across the shoulders a few times. You can't go very far. You're going to bump into the clavicle, but we're just uh, loosen things up. <clears throat> we're going to end with the thumbs right next to the neck and we're going to squeeze and hold the uh, scalenes under there. Then releasing and sliding out to the sides. We're stepping to our right and we're going to come all the way around, get the right arm off the table, two fingers in each hand, traction the shoulder and shake it out. Bouncing. So pull it towards your dantian. Don't lift it up. Just <clears throat> bounce the, as much of the arm as you can against the table. And step up into our elbow pump. So make sure the palm faces the shoulder so the radius is rotated out of the way. A couple of test pumps in and through the circling. This time it's counterclockwise. And it has to be your right hand in the elbow this time, and you're pumping with the left. You've got to keep that a little bit supinated. You know, some people, that's a little more work. And as we finish that, we step up and pull the wrist back and forth to work. Start easy, and you feel what they're capable of. You keep adding a little more stretch each time, especially <coughs> on the extension. Because both are stretching both. But now we'll straighten out and clamp and rotate the First one direction, and then the other, and reverse it again, a couple 
couple of times and rehearse it again and, and maybe even one more time to finish. Then we'll step back with the right foot, palm is down, just off the table. We spread the back of the hand. A few times there that always feels so good, I don't like to limit it. And we'll go to the palm, <coughs> spreading. And then alternating top and <coughs> bottom. And stretch those interosseous muscles, get the bones, the carpal moving. And we'll segue into our thumb slides from the wrist to the ribbing, outer pair. And then the inner pair, either side of the middle finger. Three times each should be enough of that. And now we want to change feet. So your left foot, your outside foot, and your outside hand are the ones working. Get the little finger. Down, pick up the ring finger. as you can. It really makes it feel more complete. Side passes end at the nail points. The top and bottom pass ends on the nail. Get a nice firm clamp with your thumb and forefinger. Step back helps you get a little bit of traction on the digit. Meanwhile, the other hand's got you know, traction on the arm as a whole. We're ready to change feet now. So as we change hands for the thumb, we go to the inside foot and hand. Working. And we're starting at the base of the thumb. Okay. Careful. Finish the thumb, we push the hand away to the vertical, push the sleeve out of the way. We want to stretch the body, not the clothing. Clamp the wrist, step up to the shoulder, and section number one. Maybe you can stay flat for him, maybe you can't. A little dangle. Number two, definitely more stretch, more up on your tiptoes. Nice firm clamp or it burns. Max and angle. And now the third one, step back. The left one actually doesn't matter that much. Which for it, but get that angle that gets it all the way to the spine. Max angle. And we're letting go as we walk the hand down. Put it on the table, reach over to the other hand, even out their shoulders from here this time, and leave some space between their torso and their arms. Step up, and we'll put our hands on their abdomen. Because if we had them draped, you know, it should have been on the... Yeah, I see. <clears throat> okay, if we did have a drape, we would want to pull that down and get it out of the way. Okay, so making contact, again, just like we did on the back. Get in touch with their breathing. And we want to see if we can feel their breath all the way into our right hand. If we can't, gently signal them with that hand and ask them to breathe into, all the way down into this hand.
hopefully they can do that and we feel that we're ready to start rocking them. And start slow. <clears throat> always time to get the whole body engaged get them up to speed and we'll check out that the feet are indeed moving so we can see it ripple down the legs the shoulders are moving the neck the head all should be rocking we're then going to just reach across the rectus muscles with our thumbs get a little more Grip <clears throat> for the rectus rock. And now, just like lumbar rock, we can go up and down a little bit here. So we're going to go up till we bump into the rib cage. And turn around, head back down. We'll go down as far as the ASIS level. But beyond that, the rectus kind of tapers too much and it's too low. And we'll go back up again with the rectus rock. You're just getting as much of their rectus abdominals, as much of their abdominals as you can. And back down. ASIS level. And then just back up a little bit to the umbilical level and we'll let the rock drift to a halt. Just as it's about to stop, we segue into our cat paws, gently pressing initially, working around the abdomen, kind of randomly. But in the process, we're trying to feel all our bony landmarks, rib cage on both sides, ASIS on both sides, where's the pubic bone, and remembering that <clears throat> this might, there might be some gas pockets in there, and they might pass gas, and let them know that's okay if you feel them tightening up. We're going to migrate to the right lower quadrant at the end of that and scoop up a skin roll, lift, and at the top of the lift we we'll just dangle. Giving the organs an opportunity to get back into their proper position. We're going to go three times up on our side, the near side, the ascending colon. Always remember to put the skin roll back down. Third one will be just below the costal margin. Put it down and we're going to go over to the far side, costal margin, and go down the descending colon. So there's one for the upper abdomen, one at the umbilical plane, and one in the lower abdomen. And this part of the reason for the pillow under the knees is it relaxes the abdominals a little bit. Now three more up the middle. We're gonna go right up to Ren Mai, Ren and kidney, and stomach, all get kind of scooped up there together. Same idea, get the skin roll, lift it up, take all the slack out, then angle gently, letting the organs relax. Okay, so nine of those all together. Now we're pivoting around, turning all the way around in our right hand to the right ASIS. Left hand can reach around behind you and hold their wrist hand. We can look over our shoulder right at their face and talk to them and give them instructions. We want to explain that we're going to press with their exhalation. And they're going to breathe us out whenever they're ready to. Okay, so let's all breathe in together to start. But then we're kind of on our own because everybody's going to breathe at a different rate. I was thinking about, so this is the cecum, the ileocecal valve, and appendix is the first press. And then ascending colon is the second position. Third position is hepatic flexure. And about now we probably need to let go of their hand. 
bring that hand up by your shoulder as we pivot into the middle position for the transverse colon. And anytime you missed one, just wait for it to come around and pick it up. Okay, number five, still with the right hand, is the splenic flexure. And now we change hands, bring the left hand in below the right for the descending colon. Down to the ASIS for the sigmoid colon. And people got to remember to breathe all the way down there. And then the last one, number eight, we just pivot to the center down a little bit. And this is our bladder press at the end of which, so you're pressing towards the sacrum and then towards the feet. You should be able to tell where the pubic bone is. Touching it, and then that's our cue for our diamond presses start just above the pubic bone, pubic symphysis with CV2. And then we're working up that anterior midline, getting all our CV points. Remember to breathe all the way into your lower belly so your partner can feel your breathing. So we should have about six presses to the umbilicus. You may need to spread your fingers out a little bit there, depending on the width. And then we'll start the upper abdomen, same idea. Remember to expect to feel aortic pulsations. If that's we're still interested in the breath, not those. Let the breath, the exhale, breathe you out. And so hopefully here we get another six presses before we hit the xiphoid process. So, but sometimes it's getting pretty narrow. Left fingers have to ride up on top of the right one. And then is everybody there? Okay, we're now going to just go with three fingers of the right hand. We're going to find the xiphosternal junction and then press and rotate our way up the sternum. Going to be more or less continuous and thorough, but trying to find the valleys is generally where the points are. And we're just working right on up till we get onto the manubrium. It gets a little wider and flatter there. And then the last press will be <clears throat> hook the middle finger over the sternal notch and gently pull down, gently but firmly pull down. And now as you stand up, you can spread your fingers out to kidney 27, just below the sternal head of the clavicle. Then just a little bit below that is the first intercostal space. And the second. And the third. The fourth and the fifth. 
Okay, then we're going to jump over the costal margin and start our thumb walk underneath. So pressing underneath the rib cage into the liver. And working our way down as far as we can go, staying on the front of the body. You can feel, you just feel like you can kind of lose grip. That's when one thumb jumps back up to the top and we do it again. Ideally, we get to go a little bit further with the second round because it opens up. Be careful of that tenth rib that feels floating but is loosely attached. And then our third round of some walks and a little deeper still. Always getting underneath the rib cage, not into it. And likewise, as we continue around, we don't want to hit the three ends of the ribs. So we're going to start to press simultaneously now to go around the sides. So a big thumb pad. <coughs> If we get as close to the table as we can, then slip your fingers underneath and get to the <coughs> kidneys and the bottom of the rib cage and back. And the free end of the twelfth rib is basically underneath our hands there. And we're just going to press and rotate. And then standing up, we slide. Little fingers feel the iliac crest. Then thumbs parallel horizontal to that to the middle of the rectus. We're going to press, actually you can look, pull the shirt up, see if you're at the umbilical level. And we want to be in the middle of the rectus abdominis. We're going to do a thumb circle there. Do those, then we're going to slide to the sides, elbows out. Make sure the heels of your palms are solidly on the rib cage. So your fingers are up close to the armpit. Squeeze and turn. Squeeze in and down and relax up and up and catch the next circle. And so we're pumping their breath a little bit, really working the intercostal muscles and we'll stand up. And right hand pats the screen. Just like in the diving, we get ourselves, so we're not moving up and down much. We just going to stay there. But we're going to come across the bottom of the rib cage, turn around, and now pat the liver. That open, cupped hand. If the hand's too flat, it feels slappy. Now we're going to dip into the sternum, the xyphosternal junction, forming our we're going to tap up and down the renmai a couple of times. So kind of not hit the throat and not hit the solar plexus, stay on the bone. So just slow and deliberate. And the last one is come up from the xyphosternal junction to that key point CB17 level with the fourth intercostal space. We're going to pivot around. And, but I'm going to have Kimberly switch into the table so you can see me. And you might want to do the same. So now head away. So I was right here at CB17. We're walking to the top of the table. We slide to the clavicle and lung two, where we're going to press and rotate. And then down a little bit to lung one, press and rotate. Then pivot your hands across the chest on your thumbs. And now the heels of your palms are on lung one and two. And we're going to do our chest compression, so upper chest. 
Okay, breathe you out. Now mid chest, fingertips point down, pressing on the sternum. Heart and pericardium, let them breathe you out. And then third one, lower rib cage, fingers out. Wrists about the width of their sternum apart. And then slide all the way out to the mid axillary lines. Three relatively quick squeezes up. We're going to try to get all the way to the armpit, but usually this first time you can't. So we grab the biceps, turn the elbows out, and now go back and finish. And something else we want to make sure is that our shirt tails are tucked in. <clears throat> and now from there we can pivot back to our first position and continue. So nice firm compressions, really push their breath out and let them push you out with their inhale. Following their breathing. And three on the sides. This time you should be able to get all three right up to the axilla pivot and back to the upper chest. So just like the doggy, you have to yeah, maybe get up on your tiptoes here to push down into the table, you don't want to just push toward their feet. Now elbows out to work up the sides. And now we're at the armpit, again at the end of the third round. We're going to just slide down the inside of the arms to the wrist, bring their hands up onto their abdomen, and slide up the outside of the arms to the shoulders, even them out, and then push toward the feet, stand up, push into the table, and slide one foot back and slide underneath and massage the upper back. This time we're thinking more about lung points. And just work the chest and the lungs, but massaging that upper back area. And bring our way headward, we then stand up out and work the anterior margin of the traps. Back and forth a few times. How long? It depends on how tight they are. Another, what, ten, another ten, a couple of hours, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're going to call it. <laughs> and we want to call it with the thumbs right next to the neck where we did the scalene squeeze last time. This time we bring the elbows out and turn our thumb pads into the side of the neck and start our thumb circles up the, still the trapezius anterior edge till we get to the occiput. Then we'll shift to our fingers, getting the whole back and sides of the neck. <clears throat> the finger rolls. And pick a hand, slide that one all the way underneath. The other hand goes to the top of the head to stabilize. We're going to squeeze the back of the neck, but that should work the front of the throat as well. And get those channels and points. Think about massaging the thyroid. And then the other hand is going to join it under there. We're going to form the bridge and lift. Let the head hang back. And step back with one foot, slide up to the occiput traction, and step out mid neck arch. Step back with the other foot, traction, lengthen the cervicals, and step up. We're right at the base of the skull for the third arch. Step back, traction. And now we're going to step up and we're going to do it more quickly a lift and Traction is not so great, but faster, smoother, and relaxing in a different kind of way. And we'll finish up with scooping the head up 
and dragging the back of the head with the hands and getting the hair of its long draped over the end of the table. And just the shape of the hand conforms to the back of their head, a nice slow drag. Careful to not let their head drop, but we want to get the hair nicely, uniformly combed headward so that there's not any lumps. When we're satisfied with that, we can lay the head down on the table, and we're going to the ears. Massaging and stretching simultaneously. Softening our eminence is doing the massaging. And we get more and more stretch as we go. Then we'll start the massage on the earlobe. And linger there for a little bit and then start up on the helix. And come all the way to the attachment and then start back down with that swiping motion it's the anti-helix and the scapha all the way back down to the lobe and that cartilage down there the anti-tragus is a good thumb hold for us to now get the back of the ears with the fingers finger pads anytime it feels like there's hair in the way try to get it out of the way so you're not pulling Okay, next is the tragus squeeze. Three or four of those, then slide your index finger down into the concha and start our loop-de-loops, our sweeps. And then or out and then back in and back out. We'll do three rounds of this is always our good minimum. If your finger feels too big, use this, a smaller finger, ideally your little finger. We'll end coming out, step back with one foot, fingers behind the ear, index finger in front, churn. So I'm stretching those attachments again. And we'll slide out from behind, and as we step up, we slide down to the TMJ, where we're going to linger for a little bit. Well, Pressing and circling, and <clears throat> there's a lot of tension held in there, so reasonable pressure. I don't mean it's hard, but it's, it's not super light either. Anyway, we'll work down the masseter till we get to the insertion, the angle of the jaw, then we head forward along the mandible till we get to the chin. That mentalis muscle a little bit with the fingers, then slip the fingers underneath the jaw to support it. Put your thumbs down and continue working on the mentalis. And then thumb circles back along the flat of the mandible <clears throat> till we get to the masseter insertion. We'll linger there at the bottom <clears throat> of the that muscle with our thumb circles. Now your fingers are right there at the angle of the jaw and that sets up our finger walk back toward the chin until only one finger fits. Other hand goes to the hairline and kind of holds, stabilizes the head while you're working the root of the tongue. And then, fingers still supporting the jaw, we put our thumbs down right at the, kind of the cleft there, and start our first line, the mandible line. So thumb pads are what's pressing, thumb tips always point toward the midline. And this time we take the line through the masseter insertion all the way to the ear. That Line anterior to the tragus is what we're shooting for. Okay, back to the midline. We're at CV24, press and rotate. Then thumbs on either side of the point, 
We start our gum line, lower gum line, roots of the teeth. And again, we're going through the masseter all the way to the ear. We're a little higher up now, maybe mid ear lobe. And now we go back to the midline and the philtrum into the governing vessel. We don't need to support the jaw anymore. I'll press and rotate there at the end of the channel, those three points. Then thumbs on either side, and you can curl your fingers up on their cheeks. And it's okay to rest on them as we now work laterally on the upper gum line. And the roots of the teeth there. Again, we kind of lose it as we hit the masseter, but we just keep going straight on out to the ear. And as your fingers get in the way, just reach behind the ear to the side of the head. Okay, back not to the midline this time, but to large intestine 20. We'll press and rotate. And then start this line from there. This is the one where we roll onto the side of our thumbs and push back underneath the cheekbones toward the top of their head. All the way out to the ear. This time we come onto the nose junction of bone and cartilage and slide down onto the cheeks, on top of the cheekbones for the first time. Anytime your fingers get out of the way, just get in the way, move them. This is the one that should end at the tragus and small intestine 19. Then we're going to come onto the bridge of the nose from below. And this line will go into the intraorbital ridge press. And just kind of gently pressing around. We know that bone is kind of sharp. But we're just trying to circle the eye. We'll get around to the outer canthus and then press across the temple to the ear. And now to the bridge of the nose from above and the slide into the supraorbital ridge. Remembering to make sure you release the skin around the eye that's kind of tender, easily stretched. We get to the outer canthus. We just roll off the edge of the bone onto the temple and we strike a slightly higher line than the previous one. And this is perhaps the last time we, we're right there at the ear attachment. And we go back to the midline, this time thumb over thumb between the eyebrows, that extra point there, yin tongue, and then the eyebrow line itself. Nice and firm, but thumbs are well padded. And now, for the first time, we clear the ear. We'll go all the way to the line extended vertically from the apex of the ear. And that just happens to be, on this first pass, their TB20. Now we've got three more passes on the forehead to start close to the midline with the thumb tips together. And work laterally. <laughs> all the way to the side of the head. All right, so we're well into the hair. Now with these to that apex of the ear line. So elbows out, good firm pressure. And that tension is down close to the bone. Third line will be just below the hairline. 
it's still on the forehead. And the forehead is just three thumb widths high. And this one and the last one I ended in the middle of the side of the head and the key point there, gallbladder eight. Now if your hands are sweaty, you know, wipe them off on your pants and then we'll start our finger, this is from the hairline, gliding through the hair, trying to get all the way down to the scalp, stimulate the channels and the points, but first we've got to get the hair going the right way, and we can add more pressure. So little fingers go down on the governing vessel, rest of the fingers just fan out, the bladder and gallbladder shines in lines, and then even your thumbs come in right along the top of the ear. So once we've got the hair straightened out, I'll say six or eight of these is probably good. And let's make this the last one. Our fingertips hit the table. We're going to kneel down as the hands go to the occiput. And we're going to start massaging the base of the skull. You're up on your knees and we're working back and forth across the base of the skull all the way out to the mastoid processes. And all the way back in, at least one time, all the way to the midline and the governing vessel, TV 15 and 16 there between the trapezii. And back out. The last time you want to make sure that you feel that big hollow between the SCM and the trapezius, gallbladder 20, and your middle finger should come to rest there. And brace and your other fingers go on either side of that finger, brace your forearms against the top of the table, and we're going to pull them toward our chest, and then let them go to start our occiput rock. And you're up on your knees, so you should be able to see their toes moving. And now we've got the whole body. Good rock. And we'll Finish with traction and then slowly let them relax as we sit down into Seiza and bring your thumbs around to the top of the head, one thumb on the table and the other thumb on top of that and then slides to the side, let the table thumb come up to that level that should be by weight to be 20. We're going to close our eyes and no pressure, we're just covering the point. We're going to breathe and just focus on vibration, two respirations worth minimum. And that's our portal for the yang, celestial connection. And we'll follow the yang down through the core of the body to the lower dantian and see if we can imagine uh, that we feel them breathing belly. Energetically, we're totally there. Respirations, and then we'll head down the legs to the feet and bubbling spring, Yong Chuan, the terrestrial connection. Earth, of course, is the source of the yin. That point open, the pain can flow into the body. And we're going to follow the pain flow back up from the feet to the dantian. Goodbye 
and disconnect. We open our eyes, we're going to physically disconnect fingers first, get out of the hair, in the thumbs, and gracefully get out of the hair without pulling. Maybe. Find yourself a stool or a chair or just stand nearby, wait for them to come around. Remember, close by where they can just put their eyes right on you when they wake up. And you can debrief. 